everybody, welcome back to Let's Go Geo. So if you are exploring Geology 101 or getting into rock hounding, you're probably starting to come across some of these terms like rocks, minerals, gems, crystals, and you might be wondering what are these and what's the difference between them? Well, in the coming weeks we'll be exploring all of these, but we're going to start today with one of the fundamental things you'll need to know before you get into rock hounding or rocks, and that is, what is a mineral? A mineral is officially defined as an inorganic, naturally occurring element or compound that has an orderly structure, and therefore it has definite chemical compositions, physical properties, and crystal forms. Okay, great, but what does any of that really mean? Well, let's break it down. First, minerals are inorganic, and this simply means that they are not created by anything related to an organic life form. Take, for instance, this hunk of granite. The minerals in this granite formed from the cooling of lava. Minerals are also considered naturally occurring. This means they can't be synthetically created, say, by a man in a lab. And again, the minerals that formed in this granite were created by volcanic material, magma that came to the surface, and lava that cooled and formed the various crystals you see in it. Therefore, inorganic and naturally occurring. Minerals also contain a definite chemical composition. And this means that they have atoms arranged in a specific way. Take, for instance, the silicates, one of the largest classes of minerals that contains this mineral, quartz. All of the silicates share a combination of the elements silicon and oxygen in an arrangement that forms something we call a silica tetrahedron. Minerals also contain orderly, repeated arrangements of these atoms, and that's what gives them specific crystal forms and predictable physical properties. Take, for instance, those sheets of mica. Now, mica in its chemical formula contains those silica tetrahedrons, but they are arranged in a way that actually gives them those weakly bonded sheets, giving those the physical properties that we know best from mica, like muscovite and biotite, where you can break them off in those cool, thin mineral sheets. It's also why things like disordered solids, which include this piece of volcanic glass or obsidian, are not considered minerals because they don't contain an ordered crystalline structure. Other things that don't have the crystalline structure might include things like liquids such as mercury or liquid water. However, keep in mind, when water freezes, it actually does form into an ordered crystalline structure of those ice crystals, and hence ice is a mineral. Now minerals are considered generally homogeneous, which means any specific mineral will share with another chunk of that mineral the same physical and chemical properties, and that's what helps us identify the mineral, namely with those physical properties, especially in the field. We'll talk more about how to identify specific minerals in upcoming videos. These physical properties include things like the hardness. For instance, this gypsum is known for being really soft, so soft that I can scrape it with my fingernail. Other properties also include things like the streak. We use a streak plate to swipe a mineral across it and it leaves us a colored line. Now hematite comes in a kind of silvery metallic looking form but when you scrape it across a streak plate, it leaves an iron red line. Now I have a mineral here that's kind of that silvery look to it. If I scrape it across this, I see, oh, let's do this. Yeah, right there on the edge there. That line, you can see, it's actually more of a silvery color, telling me that this mineral is not hematite, it's actually lead. Other identifying characteristics might also include the density, fluorescence in some minerals, and of course, our crystal form helps us define which mineral we have. In this case, this crystal form is that of rutile. And this crystal form is characteristic of quartz. Some minerals have their own fun characteristics like fluorescence or even smell. This one is clearly sulfur. Now there are literally thousands of different minerals out there and new ones being discovered as we speak. And all of these minerals are clustered together into mineral classes, like the silicates I already mentioned. 
There are 15 different classes of minerals, and these also include things like the halides and oxides and carbonates, as well as the native elements, like gold and silver. So there you have it. Now you know exactly what is a mineral. And in upcoming videos, I'll also talk a little more about each of these minerals, and we'll have a discussion for each mineral type that you see here today, as well as each of those mineral classes I mentioned. We'll even do some practice on how you actually distinguish one mineral from another mineral using those physical property tests that I mentioned today, so that you can actually start identifying minerals in the field. And we'll have a lot more discussions about more terms that you might come across, like what's the difference between a mineral, a rock, a crystal, a gemstone? All coming here at Let's Go Geo. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.